How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much, Nick, for uh, that awesome uh, presentation. And we definitely learned a lot from you. What I definitely enjoyed doing uh, or seeing was hearing everyone's uh, hometown, where you're from, and the fact that all of you joined us here today. So we are thankful for all of you in, in joining us uh, with this spring open house. And today, we've actually had an opportunity to color your lives by enriching all of you through booths and webinars full of information. From our color trends and fashion sketching webinar, we learned that the Pantone color of the year is both ultimate gray and Pantone illuminated yellow. And from our business of fashion and NRF webinar, we were able to see students work in the 2001 Foundation Challenge, seeing their proposals for both Target and Nordstrom's. Through your attendance within today's open house, we're hoping that we have brought you a rainbow of colors with information on our college. Whether it be obtaining one-on-one -on -one information from our department chairs, counselors, and advisors, or taking advantage of a virtual tour from our college, I hope you found your visit with us informative and rewarding. As we embark on the last session in your visit today, we're gonna put the spotlight on you and see your colors. We know that our college is a diverse mix of individuals from many different backgrounds. So let's chat about connecting you to FITM. Let's talk about the admissions process. We know you have questions and hopefully this session will provide you some answers. A matter of fact, we welcome any questions you may have. Perhaps others may have the same question too, so do not be shy. We have graphics on here dealing with the application process. Let's bring the graphics back up on there. And this is how to apply. So let's take a look at the application process uh, through the three steps that we have. First, apply online. Applying online is uh, the very first step and that connects you with an admissions advisor. Many of you have admissions advisors uh, that connect you with the college connecting with he or she would uh, empower you to get additional information on the college. We'll talk more about that in a couple of minutes. And in step two, you'll see submit the application materials. The application materials are four parts, as you can see, transcripts, essay, two letters of recommendation, and portfolio project, which we will speak more about. And finally, schedule an admissions interview. It's a Traditionally, a two-step interview process with the application process, your first step would be connecting with an admissions advisor, and that is bookended with being admitted to the college, ideally, by an admissions officer or admissions director. So in addition to understanding how that should be done, let's take a look at additional insight through a couple of my colleagues in the admissions department. One is a director and one is an advisor, providing two different viewpoints within the admissions process. Please help me welcome our admissions director, Denise Baca, and admissions advisor, Kathy Gilbert. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's been a great Saturday so far. So great. Nick was great. Nick was great. A lot of the sessions were great. I love some of those Zooms that we saw, the virtual tour, the introduction with people from all over the world pretty much uh, joining us in here today. So we have our own special group here in the admissions uh, segment, finalizing and capping up our day today. Let's take a look at some questions individuals may have. Um, very first question we have is how does the application process work for transfer students? Kelsey asked this. Ladies? Hi, Kelsey. And Denise, looking forward to your input also. Actually, the application process is the same for all students. We have students from right from high school all the way up to 60 years old and various backgrounds, various educational backgrounds. The application process varies slightly, but it's pretty much the same in that we look at transcripts, we look at recommendations, we have each student write a statement of purpose, uh, an essay describing their vision, their goals, and then we love to see an admissions project, something that they are. So the application process is really the same for all students, no matter their background. I we touched upon here. a couple minutes ago about the interview process. Somebody asked, do you get an interview only if you're accepted or does everyone get an interview? 
If I could just jump in on that one, I was going to comment on the transfer admissions process as well real quickly. Um, I always encourage students to talk to advisors as early as possible in their um, transfer process because sometimes they're interested in coming to FIDM a year or two down the road. Sometimes they want to come immediately, but an advisor could really help to um, prepare them in which classes can take and the different options they have. So I just wanted to add that in and also that everybody gets an interview as far as meeting with an advisor and being able to talk and, and I almost think of it as counseling versus an interview because they're really there to help them with um, understanding their options and helping them focus in on what their path will be. And that's one of the, the great benefits I believe that our college provides. It's a very personal process in which we really want to get to know our students. We really want to provide information. We really want to provide guidance and, and we want to assist and we want to provide as much assistance and, and uh, information that we can. So definitely. Samantha asks, do you need specific grades to get into FITM? Did you want to take that, Kathy? We, you know, we, we take a more holistic approach to the admit, uh, admissions process. We look at transcripts, we look at recommendations, an essay and a project. We definitely like to encourage students to do as well as they can, especially if they're still in high school. We wanna see grades going up. Uh, and that also allows for more scholarship opportunity. But again, the important thing is to connect with your advisor so that you can stay on track with the application and give it, uh, you know, if your grades aren't as good as you would like to see them, to, uh, to do what you can to boost up your application in other ways. Yeah, I love that, Kathy, because really it is in big part about academic ability. Right. And so we want to help the students to be prepared. And particularly when they're in high school, the advisor can really help to say, this is what's going to help your file. This is what's going to help you to um, put together um, all your pieces. And for people who are out of high school, sometimes it's difficult. Maybe there were bumps along the road in the past. But there's also other things in the recommendations in the portfolio that can help the file really shine and um, but good grades definitely help absolutely and going back to today's theme about finding your colors and, and coming from different backgrounds and in being a very diverse culture our students obviously come from many different backgrounds and places uh, including individuals coming to us with prior college etc so Kristen wants to tie that into our professional designation program she wants to find out what is that and uh, tell us more about it well, the professional designation program is an opportunity for people who have a previous degree to come in and really take a major, but just focused in the major classes. So it gives them an opportunity to jump in. It is still a degree program, but it sort of eliminates most of the general studies courses and just gives them their major. Trinity asked a question that I, uh, I definitely can provide some guidance with. She wants to find out about how early can one apply to FITM. And I always say, you know, connecting with an advisor or doing the research, it's never too early. You can be as young as you are. You can, uh, you can uh, be a student graduating from high school. So it's never too early to start that step of getting information from the college, ideally connecting with an admissions advisor. And from there, seeing if applying is your route. We're an awesome college. We're a very good college, not necessarily the right college for every single student out there. So I think by beginning and embarking on that first step and getting that information and connecting with an advisor. From there, you can see what the right major might be for you. Uh, uh, talking more about the different programs and seeing where your route is. So applying, you know, connects you with uh, an admissions advisor in regards to uh, when would be the right time for you through that dialogue and through that conversation. Right. I will add that we also do have a junior advantage program. 
So we will go all the way through the application process with juniors. We like to see one semester of their junior year minimally mm -hmm. and for them to be academically doing well. But again, an advisor can help with that, but they are eligible to enroll as juniors. And again, the earlier you do it, I think for a lot of people, they like to have that opportunity to observe their options, but also to prepare and be eligible for scholarships, which juniors are in a really good position to do that. And so someone is uh, tailgating on that specific thought about applying and what's needed and portfolio. Question is, tell us a little bit about the portfolio or project. Is it based on major? Not anymore, not necessarily. Um, I tell my students and they're welcome to do the project that's listed on the website. There's a business project and there's a design project. But when I'm talking to my students, oftentimes I will ask them, you know, what do you do that you consider creative? What do you do for fun? And a lot of them have Instagrams and they've designed websites or they, make jewelry or they take photographs or they rearrange their room. Um, and I tell them, take pictures of that and submit that. Because basically through the application process, in addition to their recommendations and what we've learned about them through an essay format, is it shows us who they are. And it's just a fun way to get to know them. So there's really not, we're not looking for you know, amazing drawing skills. We're an applied arts college. So we're just looking to see who they are as a person and for them to share that with us. So I just, we should take some of the mystery out of it and, um, and just let them do whatever they do that they already do um, that shows us their creativity. So well put, Kathy, you know, as, um, an admissions director in which I do several of the acceptance interviews, one of the things I'm always telling students what we're looking for is passion and potential. It isn't just about what you already know. We don't expect to have a professional portfolio. We are going to teach that at FIDM. However, there are students who come to us and they have AP art already. They've taken yearbook, as Kathy was saying. They've done photo shoots, styling in their room. They've done um, so many different sorts of things that are things they've enjoyed. Maybe they've altered garments. So when we're looking at these portfolios, we like to see a sampling of these things. And for the design and you know, uh, majors, they just have to provide eight to 12 different pieces. And um, some of the portfolios that I find are so enjoyable are just a real, um, they kind of tell the story about the student. So it doesn't have to be um, all one thing, although it can be if that's their real passion, or it can be multiple things if they have different interests in different areas. And I um, really enjoy the portfolio essays as well that are for the business majors, because it's really kind of saying, how do you think? You know, and they're talking about something that's relevant and happening and showing innovation in a company right now. And students write about everything from Patagonia and the things they're doing as a company or Fenty Beauty and um, the cultural significance. So it should be something fun and enjoyable that you're passionate about. But I would say as an admissions um, interviewer, one of the things I really rely on is the recommendation from the admissions advisor because they have partnered with that student and they have worked with them. So I love to hear about also how the student had the ability to sort of meet certain timelines and communicate. And they just help me to understand is this student academically and um, you know emotionally and the time in their life ready for this next step because we really want the students to be successful when they come to FIDM. That's our, that's our biggest hope and um, desire for our students. And talking more about the project slash portfolio, one thing that I always try to communicate with individuals that are looking into the application process is we know you don't have a background in this. That's why you're coming here to learn as you know, receive an education. So we know you don't have that experience, that exposure necessarily. Some do, some don't. Um, and, and so 
kind of like take away that fear and say, you know what, this is what I have and this is what I'm going to present. And one of the main reasons we have that, or another reason I should say that we have that project portfolio requirement is to elicit a dialogue. Let's talk about the creative process. Let's talk about what it is that you did with that. Uh, let's begin that dialogue and that conversation, which is, which is great. Um, you talked about recommendation, Denise. S somebody asked about the recommendation and I'm gonna read the question as is because I like the way she phrased it. Um, Selena asked, what kind of teachers should write our letters of recommendation? Um, I'm going to jump right back to that question. I wanted to add one last thing oh, about sure. portfolios that I always find interesting. Um, I want people to know that we're not comparing you to another student right. because some students do come to us and they do already have very impressive. Very good point. Yeah. And some work experience and they're 28. Another student comes in and they're a junior in high school and they're doing something new. So I, I love that you mentioned it's really a dialogue and it helps to see where that person's at, but um, we're not comparing you to another student's um, portfolio. So um, with that said though, letters of recommendation, there's such an assortment of letters of recommendation. When you are in high school, you know, I think it's important personally to pick a teacher that you connect with and who knows you. So I have seen recommendations from a art teacher, you know, and the student loved that class, but I've also seen it from a math teacher when the student said math was not their favorite subject, but they really worked hard in that class and the instructor really saw that they worked hard. So it can be teachers, it can be coaches, it can be your dance instructor, it can be um, maybe you work at a part-time job or you've been babysitting for a couple of years. So we're really looking at a variety of different um, areas that you can reach out to. Yeah, and that's one of the main things. Selena, if you're listening, it does not necessarily only need to be from an instructor. Coaches, as Denise was saying, it would be great counselors, et cetera. We talked a lot about admissions advisors. Obviously, we're from the world of admissions. Nora wants to know how to connect with one of us or an advisor period. How does one connect with an admissions advisor? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, some students are ready to pop on, apply, start that process, connect with somebody, start talking to them. Welcome to do that. Also, there's a button on our website that says contact admissions and you can just click on that and somebody will start helping you. And um, you know, you can even do it the old fashioned way and call the college. Satali, Satali, you're starting, I hope I said your name correctly, forgive me if I, I didn't, um, uh, regardless, I believe it's Satali, you'll be starting at FITM in the fall, congratulations on being admitted to the college, any advice on what to do to make the most of your FITM journey? Ladies? That's a big question, I love it. I would definitely start with our March 30th event that we are having um, with Dr. Gwen Matos. She will be welcoming the July and the October students uh, with a goal and um, career planning workshop. So I would definitely connect with that. Um, and then stay in touch with your admissions advisor so that you can you know, get all your financial aid documents in order and you know, be part of the priority registration uh, if you have transfer classes, getting all of the things done that you want to get done so that you're ready to uh, have a successful journey here. One of the things that we were talking about, Kathy, when we were prepping for today's open house was SATs, and somebody is asking about that. Um, are they required? Talk to me a little bit about SATs, ACTs, et cetera. You know, I, they are not required. Uh, however, we highly encourage students to take it. So if they are a junior in high school, and even if they're at the beginning of their senior year, I definitely recommend it. Because the good thing is, if they don't do well, it's not going to hurt their application whatsoever. But if they do take it and they do do well, it can eliminate some testing down the road. So it takes some of the angst out of taking the test because they know it's not really a requirement, but it allows us to be able to look at the score and possibly use it 
down the road to eliminate some uh, some testing. So I absolutely recommend taking it. Ashlyn asked a question that I've heard uh, students ask before. So I love Ashlyn that you know that we're a specialized college. So you would naturally ask, do people take general, general ed classes at FIDM? Question from yeah. Ashlyn. But it also depends at what point you come in. Um, we are a degree granting college and students often start off in the AA program. So they're gonna be taking math, um, effective speaking, critical thinking, English composition, an assortment of general studies classes. Something that makes it very unique though is they start in their first quarter in their major classes as well. So the general studies classes are sprinkled throughout the program and they are really specifically chosen to complement what they're learning in their majors. You know, some of them are requirements like an English composition, but a English composition instructor at FIDM is going to embrace what the majors are and they'll do projects and research and get all the things they need for their English class, um, but in majors in areas that they're interested in. So we want to really help them to just enhance um, you know, their ability to professionalize themselves as they go through school. We like to think of our general studies classes as supporting the major because you can be a wonderful artist, but you've got to be able to sell yourself. You have to know what's going on in the world today. You have to be able to think critically. So we like to think of those classes as supporting the major, and that's why they're important. Valentina, ask a question. I love your question, Valentina, because you're making us think and you're making us go back in the recesses of our mind. Her question is, what's an admissions application that you found memorable? What makes up an ideal application? Such a good question. You know, I when Denise was talking about portfolio, I uh, just this week got a couple of really um, wonderful projects from two juniors in high school that are applying now. And they both did the business project that's on the website. And for young 16 year old juniors, they were the most thoughtful, uh, wonderfully written projects that really talked about sustainability which is something that FIDM is so much on the cutting edge of and social responsibility. Uh, and it was so refreshing to read that. I think anything, the essay is important. Speaking from the heart is important. Anything that shows us who, again, who you are, every, every student is so unique and they bring so much to the table that you really can't compare, but to do everything that you can do to make your application stand out. And that's by giving it a hundred percent. I uh, would say I completely agree because there's been so many that I have just thoroughly enjoyed. I would say that some of my favorites have been when they're presenting their portfolio or their project and they're so, um, I, I can kind of feel their excitement. You can tell it was something they really enjoyed and they were excited about it and they're explaining it. And I had one not too long ago and the student had wanted to be involved in designing bathing suits. And she took photos from trips she had gone on and then related those areas to her bathing suit. So it was very personal, but she was very excited and passionate about it when she talked about it. And um, like Kathy said, I enjoy it when their whole file just speaks to who they are. Mm -hmm. Wor working in the admissions department, I, I think probably the admissions uh, submissions that uh, connect uh, with me right now in my memory were the ones that uh, work with me in regards to saying, I know, Christian, that I'm submitting and I know you're working with me. What do you think about this? Uh, this is what I've created. What are your thoughts based on me submitting this? Or this is my essay. What do you think about what I've written? So I love the collaboration because as admissions advisors, Kathy, I'm sure you would agree, we are 
you know, the people that helps and assist and coach and recommend students to be admitted to the college. So students have that opportunity to feel comfortable saying, this is what I'm thinking. What is it? Do you, what do you think about my intention of submitting this? I'm getting that so much more too than I ever did before. Students will say, you know, can I send you my essay to yes. look at before I submit it? And I really feel like I'm their partner in this whole process, which I've always felt, but more and more so. And so we'll, you know, I'll critique it, uh, whether it's, you know, a change in a paragraph or a spell or whatever. And we really partner together and it's really, it's really been great. So when we get the finished product, they're proud of it. I've had a chance to review it and it just, it's very positive. Two more questions, two last questions. Um, many students, a, a general theme that we're receiving right now uh, from individuals that are out there is, how do I choose a major? How do I know which major is right for me? Well, Denny, I would probably say the same thing. Again, I can't stress enough the relationship with the advisor and how critical that is from the very beginning uh, because that is oftentimes when we talk about their dreams and their vision and their passion and where do they see themselves. And sometimes they're calling one major a name and it really is the content of it is something else. So uh, again, the relationship helps to foster choosing the right major and then going from there. And if I can add too, you know, we've added some tools over the years to our mm -hmm. website that a career quiz is often something a student just enjoys to take because it asks them some questions that get them thinking about, do I like this? Do I not like this? Then they take that conversation with the admissions advisor, help hone in what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And then the advisor often says, okay, now, you know, take a couple of peek at these classes, let's follow up to really help them feel secure in what they're um, selecting. And if there isn't something, you know, as you said earlier, Christian, sometimes there is not a major at FIDM, then the advisor and the student can see that. Or if they need a little additional time, the advisor works with them on that too. But um, it really is a process. Got it. And so that circles back to what we were touching upon earlier and the last question that we have. Um, somebody was asking about scholarships, but again, connecting with an admissions advisor, someone asked about that. The website is a good opportunity for that, fidm.edu, the career quiz for that, uh, fidm.edu, and uh, finding out about scholarships. We have that information on there. Uh, last thoughts in regards to scholarship. Any uh, student wants to know about scholarships and how we offer that. So aside from the website, any thoughts, Kathy or Denise? Yeah, I'll jump in, Kathy. Go ahead. And if there's more you want to add, you know, there's a few different things. An advisor in part of the admissions process does, um, you know, there's the website. So there's pieces there that you could look at and see what you're eligible for already. Um, but we often encourage people to do the FAFSA so that we could see what their financial situation is. So there might be some additional scholarships that, you know, they're not even thinking about. And then we can analyze where they're at. And, you know, having higher grades is always helpful for the academic side, but there are other creative ones and working ones and transfer ones. Mm -hmm. And also on our website is a link to some outside scholarships. Right. So these are ones that aren't from FIDM, but you may qualify for other reasons. So those are worth checking too. Absolutely. Very, very good. Any last words, ladies, before we say goodbye to the two of you? I'll go ahead and chime in. You know, okay. one of the questions that I thought your one of the uh, guests asked a little earlier about preparing for FIDM, I think she was asking too, what were some things she could do while at FIDM? And, you know, obviously getting prepared and all of those steps are so important, but I just like to say that if you select FIDM and you're accepted to the college, that I, I hope today you got to talk to people and sort of get a sense of what it's really like, because this is about your own journey when you come to FIDM. And, 
it's like starting your career. So I always tell students, you know, engage in your education, ask questions, participate, have conversations and start your networking because this is a time where you're going to meet friends in class that you'll be out in the industry with. You're going to meet people who are the faculty members who are working in the industry, the chair people. It's just an amazing opportunity to um, meet people and um, start becoming the professional that you want to be. Very nice. Very nice. And if there's anyone that you didn't connect with today that you would like to contact your advisor so that we can make that happen for you. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Kathy and Denise. I appreciate it. Welcome. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. So we talked about the website. We talked a lot about FIDM. And one of the things I definitely want to steer everybody uh, regarding the website to when, uh, another, uh, another uh, event that we have coming up is three days of fashion. So definitely look into that. It's such an awesome event. It's coming up in a couple of months. So I definitely want to invite all of you. We have the graphics right there, June 23rd to the 25th. So please make sure to pay attention to that. Um, in closing, you know, today we, we hope you prov we provided you with uh, the colors to empower yourself to be your multidimensional selves. It's a colorful world out there. And with, with, our palette of colors that we have at our school, FITM can be a gateway to make your colors stand out. Have a great weekend. We thank you so much. Connect with us for further questions, FIDM.edu. I'm Christian Morali. Thanks so much for joining us with our spring 2021 open house. <laughs>